Hi everyone, once again you'll notice that my background has changed and that is because I am in Germany right now, which is very fitting for today's book review because today's book review is Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. I've heard about this book for a long time because I know that a lot of people had to read it in school in some grade or another, but I never had to and I feel like that's actually happened with a lot of books in my life. I never had to read Lord of the Flies, I never had to read To Kill a Mockingbird, um, I don't remember reading 1984, so I just feel like there's a lot of books that other people had to read in school that I never had to, which I'm actually really grateful for because, of course, when you're forced to read something for school, I feel like it's never as fun and you don't enjoy it as much. So I'm glad that I waited to read Slaughterhouse-Five, especially since it's a really weird book. Not a bad book, but it is weird. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, Kurt Vonnegut I think is a really great writer in the sense that it was super easy to read. I was never super confused. The words all rolled together well. I didn't really have to go back and be like, wait a minute, what did I just read that was super confusing and the wording was weird. And so I really appreciate writing like that where it just kind of flows together. Like the story may be strange, the story may be way out there, which I feel like this one sort of is, but because the writing is so good, you're just kind of like, yeah, that's okay. Like I'm going with it. It works, you know, like I can still keep reading because I understand it, even if it's very, very strange and crazy. Because Slaughterhouse-Five, basically what I knew about it before I read it is that it was a anti-war satirical book about the bombing of Dresden in Germany. Which in my opinion, it totally isn't because this isn't a real spoiler. Like you'll see when you read the book, the bombing of Dresden doesn't really come in until towards the end of the novel. So I don't really know why it's kind of like advertised as this anti-bombing of Dresden book, because like I said, that really didn't come into play until the end. It's definitely an anti-war book for sure. I don't really know why they focus on the bombing of Dresden, except for the fact that it's called Slaughterhouse Five and Kurt Vonnegut, who actually served in Germany for the Americans in World War II, did survive the bombing of Dresden by taking refuge in a slaughterhouse, which was Slaughterhouse Five. So that's the only reason I could think that it would be kind of, like I said, advertised as a bombing of Dresden book, even though in my opinion, it totally wasn't. I mean, I guess not totally because it does come play in the book. <laughs> but yeah, that was a really long explanation for this is basically an anti-war book and it covers more than just the bombing of Dresden in Germany. Um, but yeah, I really liked it. Once again, Kurt Bonnie actually did serve in World War II. So a lot of these scenes in the novel were taken from his life, at least the war scenes but it's about a man named Billy who becomes unstuck in time. So the novel is definitely not linear. It jumps all over the place. And so sometimes it's kind of hard to keep track of what's happening, especially when I put it down for like a couple of days and then picked it back up to read it again. I was like, wait a minute, where am I in the story right now? Which is probably what Billy would feel like if he's unstuck in time and bouncing around all the place, he'd be like, wait a minute, where the hell am I in my life right now? So I kind of actually liked that because it was very jarring sometimes to pick it up again, which is exactly what it would be like if you become on second time, which I don't know if I explained that, is it's just he, he bounces around to different periods of his life. Like one minute he's in World War II and then, oh, he's back in school. Oh, he's jumped forward to when he's getting married and stuff like that. That's what I mean by unstuck in time. And then there's a whole arc of him being abducted by the Trafalmadorian aliens, which I am not sure if I pronounced that right, so sorry <laughs> if someone's an expert on how to pronounce Trafalmadorian. Sorry, I pronounced that wrong, but holy... <laughs> I'm sorry, like I'll keep this in, but a bug just almost flew into my ear that scared me so bad. And now it's flying around the room, which is fine, <laughs> as long as it's not in my ear. Anyways, like I said, so the book is really weird because it's a man on second time, it's non-linear, but because the writing is so good, it was very good and I actually loved it. Um, there's a part in the book where he starts, um, so it kind of starts with Kurt Vonnegut talking about how he's going to um, 
write about the Dresden and he's always talked about writing his war book. I should have flipped to this earlier, but he never did. And now he's going to, and it says that like when his little chapter finishes and then the story of Billy begins, it says this, it begins like this. Listen, Billy Pilgrim has come unstuck in time. It ends like this. Pooty wheat. And so of course I had to check and it does. The story of Billy begins, listen, Billy Pilgrim has come unstuck in time and it ends with Pooty wheat. And I freaking love that. So I would definitely suggest Slaughterhouse Five. It's an anti-war book. I think in today's world, it's super important actually because of what's happening in the world right now, especially in Ukraine. And to show that war isn't this glorified thing and it really sucks and it's just horrible no matter what side you're on the winning side or the losing side it is horrible for you and kurt vonnegut was only 21 or 22 i believe when he came back for the war and just thinking about how young that is and to have experienced all that i mean after dresden was bombed he was still a prisoner of war in germany and he was forced to go through all this rubble and search for dead bodies and i'm i can't imagine coming home from that and moving on with life, to be honest, like it would be so hard. And so, yeah, I definitely suggest Slaughterhouse Five. So well written, very interesting, very good book and give it a go for sure. Because Billy becomes unstuck in time in the book. My question today is, would you like to become unstuck in time where you would be able to bounce back and forth between different parts of your life? And at first, when I thought it, I was like, yeah, that'd be really great. You know, I could go relive some of my best memories, like seeing ACDC for the first time, or like, then I'd get to spend time with my dog who's passed away. But then also, if you're unstuck in time and you're just waking up in different places, you never know where you're gonna wake up. You could wake up in the worst day of your life and I don't wanna relive that either. So it's kind of a toss up. Like part of me is like, yeah, my life hasn't been that bad but I have had really bad days and I wouldn't want to wake up and have to relive them. So even though obviously it'd be great to go back and relive the best moments of my life, the trade-off of the worst days I think would have me say, no, I would not want to become unstuck in time. So if you could become unstuck in time and you were given a choice, would you, is my question today. And sorry, this one was a bit long and rambling, it's the first one I've filmed in a while, actually. But yeah, this was Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. Once again, weird book, but I'm definitely glad that I read it. I just found it on the shelf at like a used bookstore and was like, hey, I've heard of this. And you know what? I have some gift card here, so I might as well just pick it up and read it and totally enjoyed it. Go check it out. It's really good. Thank you guys. Subscribe if you like books and hearing me ramble on about books and <laughs> subscribe down below and give us a like and comment if you could become unstuck in time, would you? Thank you so much for listening, you guys, and you all have a great day.